What up? What up? What up? What up? This is your boy, Noob1949, a.k.a. DJ Rob Will. Episode 3, Life of a Rookie DJ. I'm burnt out. I'm tired. I had a long work week. But I just wanted to go ahead and drop some knowledge and hopefully get some suggestions, hints, tips um, in the comment section. Well, one thing to think about as a rookie DJ. And I know a lot of rookie DJs might be younger than myself because I'm in my late 20s. So I've had a lot of musical experience, meaning I've heard, you know, probably there's, there's a higher probability I've heard more music or more genres or more types of music than someone who's trying to do the same thing and I'm doing right now and they're 15 or 16. You know, some, some, you know, younger guys are really, really, really into music. So maybe someone's my equal, but the chances of them, you know, actually growing up in this day and age and hearing some of the good classic music that I've heard, uh, I think it's highly unlikely unless their parents are really into music or something like that. Or like I said, if they're really into it. So I encourage you all to, and like myself, Find a music mentor. Now, this is separate from a DJ mentor. You know, a, a DJ mentor, I believe, in general, will show you the robes, teach you how to DJ, show you tips and tricks, let you come on some gigs, might come to some gigs with you. But um, when I say a music mentor, find someone who's into music. Find people who are into different genres of music. Because I feel like the more genres that you have in your collection, the broader the audience you can capture the broader the audience you can perform for. You know, I'm heart and soul to the core hip-hop and R&B. I can do, well, I'm not even going to go into rap versus hip-hop, whatever. Some people say it's under the same umbrella, but I'm not going to get into that. You know, I just say hip-hop and R&B. That's me. But everyone doesn't listen to that. I just happen to be in the area where the demographic, you know, I have Caucasian, I have Asian, I have Indian, I have Black, you know, all kind of nationalities. So my thinking is this. I would like to be able to, I don't want to have to turn down a booking because I don't have the music, basically. Or I don't know enough about the genre that they would want me to play. You know, I've I've recently branched in the country. And that doesn't mean you have to be an aficionado or you have to listen to it every single day. But, you know, I would encourage you to at least give it a chance and learn. You know, and say, you know what? I think I can deal with this. Now, granted, it's easier to focus in in a single area, you know, because then you have to really learn the different BPMs and how to mix and buying more and more music. But, you know, the drawback, in my opinion, to that is you're limited to an area or a field of music. You know, I mean, think of it as a car dealership. You know, if you're a car dealership who only sells sports cars, then you're only going to get people to come to your lot that buy sports cars. Versus if you sell sports cars, family cars, SUVs, then you're going to get a broader audience and the chances are you might get more business. So that's the way I kind of look at DJing. So, you know, I listen to pop. Um, I listen to some hardcore rap because some people like that. I've started to listen to country. Um, One thing that I definitely started um, researching and getting into is kids music. Um, And that's the next topic I'm going into, you know, but before I do that, find a music mentor, find someone who's in love with music, who might have a music collection that you can get, you know, and and start listening to it. And I'm talking about people, you know, well, let me think now, probably in their 30s, 40s, 50s, maybe even their 60s and say, hey, you know, what were some of the best songs that you remember when you went to a party or stuff like that? Dog, in in your cell phone or notepad or whatever whatever you have. Write it down, man, and go home and find that music, buy the music, you know, and I promise you, you'll never regret it. It's a lot of work. You know, like I said, the disadvantage I have is that I'm starting late, but the advantage that I have is I've had the musical knowledge, man. I've been collecting music since about 2004, you know, I almost have 40,000 songs, so, and it branches all, almost every genre. I don't get into the quote unquote techno or... Ooh, all that other stuff. I'm trying to learn house. I got to find someone who knows about house music, which is, is different. You know, I've, I've been trying to find a hard time finding somebody who's in the house and 
you know, knows the artist and knows stuff like that. But on to the next subject, clean music. And this is another, you know, tip. Get clean music. Now, I've partied a lot, you know, in my life. And now that I think about it, a lot of the parties, they were younger. No one was truly listening. And the music was dirty. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with dirty music because sometimes people just want that raw emotion. However, as I got older and more mature and I went to different events because, you know, the party you go to when you're 21 might not be the same party you go to when you're 26, 27. And I started going to parties with older crowds. I started noticing that I could really hear the music. And at times I noticed that whoever was in charge of the music, because it, it wasn't necessarily a DJ all the time. Sometimes it was just a mixity. I'm like, ooh, they're really playing that right now? And you have to think, you know, this is more of a mellow environment. So when this music plays, people are really gonna hear it. Versus a party, most of the time, you just move into the beat. But if it's more of a mellow, relaxed, or even an older person's party, they like singing along with the lyrics. So you gotta be careful with that. And I think even at you know a hardcore you know club party, not not playing a dirty version isn't an issue either. But having clean music also it's a safeguard because if someone you know wants to book you and says, hey, you know kids are going to be there, can you keep it clean? You don't want to be like, oh, all right, my video cut off, so this might be a weird transition. But anyway, like I was saying, you don't want to get booked for a gig and they say, hey, you know kids are going to be there, can you keep the music clean? You know, then you're like, man, I got a collection of, you know, 1,500 or 2,000 songs, but all of them are the dirty versions or most of my music is dirty. Then you either got to go through your DJ software, you know, play the songs and make, you know, your own edits as a DJ or you got to go out and buy the clean versions. And that's going to be a lot of money. So what I would suggest is joining a record pool. I would check DJ TLM TV on YouTube. That is DJ TLM TV. He has a video up about record pools. All right. So think about that. And that I'm going to join some very soon. But I just happen to have a great collection that's got me thus far. And I'm about to have a new gig this coming Sunday. Um, and it's going to be kids. You know, I, I got a good two and a half hour block. I'm getting paid good money. And it's going to be kids. And this brings me to the next topic I want to bring up. Don't just take a gig for the money. If you don't think you're going to be able to perform or that's not really your genre of music, I would say, unless you're just, you know, a go getter like me and you have the time to put into prepping, then I would say don't take the gig, you know, take that L, but say to yourself, you know what? I want to be better prepared next time. Um, they asked me for this kind of music. Let me start collecting some of this kind of music and listening to it and learning it and understanding it. Um, because the gig I have coming up is going to be kids. And they're like, you know, they want me to play a certain, I don't want to say the brand, but it's a TV station. Very popular. And they pretty much everyone on that station sings. And they want it 80s and 90s. So I was like, ooh, 80s and 90s I got. And I have songs appropriate for children by some of the artists they love. But when I looked up that particular brand and genre and started looking at the artists they had and listened to it, I said, okay, I'm not the most familiar with this, but this is similar to some of the things I've done before. So what I did, the gig is Sunday. On Monday, I started buying new music, listening to it, playing it, going over sets. Um, Today is Friday. I'm actually sitting down, putting together, and like I told you in the first video, bring more music than you need. I'm booked for two and a half hours. I'm putting together a playlist probably of about four hours of music. Just in case. Just in case. You know, I like to play safe. So a lot of the music that I already have will fill some of that space. But a lot of the new music, I probably want to put at least an hour of the specific genre that I didn't have before to give them a good blend and a good mix. So the kids have fun. So the adults have fun. So prepping for your gig is important. And I've heard a lot of DJs say, oh, you know, you can go in there and freestyle it just by going through your crates or you can prep in advance and even do a, 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 a mock set, you know, set your playlist. You know, I got my gear set up over there. I don't know if y'all can see that. Um, I got my gear set up over there and probably tomorrow sometime, either that morning, tomorrow morning or in the afternoon, I'm going to run a mock set and run through about 
an hour and a half or maybe the full two and a half hours of the set. I might not necessarily play like that on that day because I, I believe in, you know, starting out mellow, hitting that peak, peaking Sorry, for a good minute. Like I was then, saying, I, I believe in coming in mellow, bringing it to a peak for a while and bringing it back down at the end. So I'm going to go through that mock gig and see probably what I'm going to play first when I'm going to play second. I'm not saying you have to necessarily say, oh, I'm going to play this song first, this song second. That's a lot. I don't think I'll ever do that. But I would like to know the area or the band of songs. I'd say, you know, within these 20 songs, I know I need to play these in the first hour or the first half hour or whatever. Um, so that's just, you know, my tip for the rookie DJs like myself, because I'm going through this right now. You know, this is something I, I haven't. This isn't anything I've done already. I'm going through this right now. This gig is coming up in two days. So. For those of you out there looking, getting into the DJ genre, already into the genre, hit me with comments, questions. I'll be glad to respond um, and share the knowledge, man. That That's all I'm here for. You know, I'm sitting on the couch. I'm relaxing. I had a rough work week. I'm about to sit here and listen to about an hour of music just to see what songs I want to play, what songs I don't want to play. Out of my music, are the songs clean enough? Because a lot of times you get words like sex. You get word, you get the D word sometimes, you get the word, you get ASS sometimes. Maybe that's not clean enough because some clean versions aren't totally clean. So definitely when you get new music, listen to it and listen to the lyrics, man. A lot of people don't do that. And then when you get to an event, you play it, you're like, oh, wow, did they just say that? And uh, honestly, a lot of times I think you'll get away with it. Because, like I said, sometimes some people are so into the event that they don't realize what's really being said. But, you know, I'd rather play it safe than sorry. So, this is your boy, Noop1949, a.k.a. DJ Rob Will, Episode 3, Life of a Rookie DJ. Please like the page. Please subscribe. Thank you for all the support. And I would probably do Episode 4 on Sunday. After well, before and after this gig, I'll do a before and after video, and I'll let you guys know how it goes, and I'll let you know how you know everything turned out, and probably gonna give you some business tips because I have some interesting, interesting tidbits to give you all. So until next time, all my DJs, DJ, oh my goodness, tongue tied today. Until next time, all my DJs out there, keep spinning. No edits. This is my real life. If I mess up, I'm gonna put it in the video. Dang it. Peace.